Does anybody remember the numbers from those? I'm pretty sure this was 11 and this one was 9. 72. 72? Sweet. That was easy. Here's what I'd like to do. I want to find the probability of selecting someone who is guilty and then selecting someone who is not guilty. So I want to find the probability of selecting someone guilty and then without replacement, that means I don't put that person back in the, in the mix, I want to select someone who's not guilty. So how many people am I selecting? How many people? If I'm selecting one person who's guilty and then selecting another person who's not guilty, how many people in total? Two, two people. Notice how we have two trials now. One trial's happening and then another one's happening. So the probability of selecting guilty and then not guilty that and in the multiplication rule that we just talked about that said this and means in successive trials that really should be written and then a and then b so if you want to put a little and then that would separate them for you that's what we really mean is the and then so find the probability of selecting guilty and then not guilty. Let's talk about the guilty. What's the probability you're going to be found guilty in this group of people? How many guilty people do we have? How many people who were found guilty? Yeah, it's not just 72, right? It's not just 11. This is my guilty column or my guilty row. I have 83 people. Eighty-three people were found guilty out of how many? Out of how many? Okay, how would you find out how many? Add them all up. How much was it? Oh, all to the all four? All four is everybody. One seventy seven. I'll believe you. Yep, 177. Are you okay that the probability of being found guilty is 83 out of 177? There's 177 total people in this, 83 of them were found guilty. True? Now, here's the idea. This is a big part of this in the last few minutes here. And then implies this. This is a key point. And then, the and, implies, let's assume that this actually happened. You found someone who was guilty. You took him out of the mix. Can you please tell me how many not guilty people we have to choose from? 94. 94 people. Out of how many total people? Okay, sit, hang on. Say, say that again. How many people? Why not 177? Oh, we, one guy was, is now in jail, right? So we pulled that guy out. He's gone. We now have, instead of 177 people, if we assume, listen, if you're pulling out two people in a row, if you pull out the first guy and he was guilty, your 83 drops to 82. You also pulled one, one guy out from the 177. So this total drops down. This is now only 176. You pulled someone out. Now, our 94 stays 94. We didn't pick out a not guilty guy. We picked out the guilty guy. So again, when you're talking about and then, notice how your probability can actually change as you go through and do more and more events. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? This would be without replacement. Make sure you know that. Without replacement. Remember this idea for Friday because we're going to talk about conditional probability. It's all based on this. Uh, but for right now, the key things we need to know are that and means and then, like the successive events, probability of one occurring and then another occurring. It's different than the addition rule that we just accomplished, and we'll talk about the rest of the stuff next time. So we're talking about this probability, and we've realized that and in this instance means in successive events. So we want something and then something else. Really, the and in the multiplication rule should be and then. 
And here we had our probability of answering both these questions right. We figured out last time was one tenth. Probability of selecting someone guilty, we have here, and not guilty there. Now, what this leads to, I want you to look at this. Did this probability of getting this question right, or the probability of getting this question right, affect the outcome of this question? Did these two questions affect each other? My, my, basically, does answering this question right or wrong have anything to do with answering this question right or wrong, or getting this, the probability of selecting this one right or wrong? The answer is no. That these have nothing to do with each other. However, when you look down here, look at this. Did the probability of selecting someone guilty affect the probability of selecting the next person as not guilty? It did, because that number dropped. We took out a person from our, our sample here. Does that make sense to you? This leads to an idea called conditional probability. We're going to talk about that right now. Conditional probability. Here's what conditional probability is. It's the probability of some event occurring given that another event has already occurred. So in this instance, it was, what's the probability of selecting someone who is not guilty given that you just selected someone who was guilty? Does that make sense to you? It's conditioned upon some previous event. So when we say conditional probability, we mean the probability of an event occurring given that some other event has already occurred. given that some other event has already occurred. I want to go back and find these probabilities individually. We're going to kind of draw some conclusions from this later. Uh, look up here with me on, on example number one here. Can you please tell me what's the probability of getting this question correct by guessing? I mean, I told you the answers of these, so you should get 100% on all this, right? Because you know everything about me now. But what's the probability of guessing and getting this answer right? Mr. Leonard drives an Audi. Sure. Why? Because there's one correct answer out of how many choices? Sure. What was the probability of guessing this one correct? How many choices are right? How many total choices do you have to choose from? Okay. Uh, now, does getting this one right affect this one at all? No. Okay, so this, we're going we're gonna to learn about this in just a second. Uh, this probability would be one-fifth. Okay. Now, in this case, we had the probability 83 over 177. That came from we had 83 guilty people out of the 177 total. That would be our probability of getting someone guilty. Let's pretend that this didn't happen right now. I'm just looking at the probability of not guilty. What I would have is 94 out of 177 if I just found the probability of selecting one not guilty person. Are you with me on that? But after I say this, do this after selecting the guilty person, then that probability drops. It's conditioned on the fact that you just pulled out a person who was guilty and you kept them out because we're talking about without replacement. That's our, the idea of conditional probability. It's that sometimes a probability is dependent on a previous event. Here, this probability really wasn't dependent on the previous event. Uh, we're going to talk about independent and dependent in just a second. This would be an independent event. Here, this one depends on what happened first, right? This is an example of a dependent event. So conditional probability is looking at two probabilities happening and find the probability of an event given that a previous one has already occurred. The way you write that out, it's, it's still a probability. It's just conditional probability. It looks like this. You're going to have some event, like event B, you have this vertical line, and what this vertical line stands for in, in statistics and probability is given that. 
So what this probability says is the probability of event B happening given that A has already occurred. This is the probability of event B occurring given that event A has already occurred. happen in these cases. This is find the probability of getting the color question correct given that you already got the Audi one correct. Now the Audi one doesn't affect the color one. It's not, pro not a problem. But here it's find the probability of selecting someone who's not guilty given that you just selected someone who's guilty. And that does affect the probability. So I, I need you to see the difference. Do you see the difference between this type of problem where the one probability does not affect the other one, where one event does not affect the other one, and this one where one event certainly did affect the other probability. How many people see that difference there? So sometimes, yeah, we have uh, probabilities that don't affect each other. Some events don't affect each other at all. Other times we do. Th this without replacement here certainly affects the second probability. This gives us a definition for what's called independent events. Here's the basic definition for an independent event. Uh, independent means, like, if you're independent, you stand alone, right? Independent man or independent woman. Stand alone, don't need anybody else. Nothing affects me, right? That's kind of what independent means uh, in kind of English, right? You're, you're, you're by yourself. You don't rely on anything. That's what independent means for probability two. Uh, an independent event or events which are independent says the occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of another event. Those things would be independent. Here's the example I have for you. Okay, it's, it's back here. Does this event affect the outcome of this event? Does this event affect the outcome of this event? That's the difference between dependent and independent. Events which are not independent are dependent. You have to be one or the other. Okay, so independent events, the occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of another. Dependent events, the occurrence of one event does affect the occurrence of another event. So when we're talking about independent events, that's what we're going to write down. The occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of another event, or I should say probably subsequent event, the one after. 